Super Mario Run. It's Mario on your phone. It's something I've recently been playing a lot of. So today, I ask the question all YouTubers must someday ask. My name is Rokon, and here's why it isn't possible to beat Super Mario Run without touching a coin. The rules are simple. I'll be playing through every level in the game, trying to keep this coin counter as close to zero as possible. Where there is no set limit, I'll just write the level off. Maybe someone with more patience than me could figure out the exact limit and get the perfect run, but I'm the wrong guy for the job. So let's begin. Every character in the game has something they're better at than anyone else. Luigi jumps high, Peach is floaty, Toad is fast, Daisy jumps twice, Yoshi has this weird flutter jump and can jump on spikes, neither of which I found particularly useful. Toadette is cute. And Mario, as ever, is completely useless. So let's jump into it, shall we? Right away we have a choice to make. Each level has three variants that slightly alter how it plays depending on the coin color you selected at the start. We'll want to use the black coins for 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one presents us with a few tricky jumps to narrowly dodge these coins, but skillful use of Daisy's double jump will get you through this level coinless. Oh. Let's ignore the fact that the flagpole gives a coin and move on to 1-2. to two. Well, focus past you to Nintendo. 1-3 to three treats are slightly better, but this block of coins is too long to jump over without turns blazing speed. Time your jumps carefully and you can beat this level with a perfect 1-4. One 1-4 one barely contains any coins and also doesn't have a flagpole, meaning that we can get 0 coins in this. Those don't count. 2 1 is a ghost house level. Which door opens for you is completely random, but they're all impossible to get to coinless, and I don't really want to try to get the lowest score on this one. 2 2 was quite the puzzle. Take damage from this bullet. Drop here to avoid steamrolling this poor Cooper. Jump here to avoid vaulting straight into the coin block. Avoid these arrows at all costs. They spawn almost unavoidable coins when touched. And above all, use Peach's float to skip this platform. At least I could get it down to one coin after all. 2-3 is just... rude. 2-4 was a messy one to do with all these unpredictable cannonballs flying about. I couldn't get past this last airship on the pink version of the stage, but switching to purples fixed everything. Boom Boom doesn't even give a coin, netting us another zero. 3-1 is a desert level with... Oh no. Does it hurt, Rokon? Knowing that your ability to beat this level without touching a coin is kept just barely out of reach by my unpredictable coin throwing habits. Even if you were to figure out my erratic patterns, dodging every coin I throw at you will take a tower's like level of skill and luck. I can feel your spirit draining away with each coin that hits your bulbous head. Will you keep fighting, Rokon? Oh, will you just give up? I think I'll give up, thank you. What? Knowing that this level could be possible will haunt me forever, but not enough that I'm willing to grind for the perfect run. Then give up, knowing that perfection will never be possible as long as I haunt this forbidden wasteland. Well, let's hope we never see that guy again. 3-2 is defined by a couple of tight jumps, but overall it's not that hard. Damn it. I don't know if those coins can be avoided from those bullets. 3-3 is just not very nice. You're expected to commit mass murder and loot every single one of these boomers, but you can't really do that in this challenge, leading to some careful rooting and two very precise jumps. 3-4 is mercifully easy though. 4-1 is just not possible any way you look at it. 4-2 looks like it ought to be impossible with anything less than 7 coins, but with good timing you can get that number down to 5. These blue coins may look daunting but you can just wait for them to go away. I kept expecting 4-3 to shove a wall of coins down my throat, but it just... didn't? Well, thank you. 4-4 four, four was a little annoying but not very hard to navigate. 0 points. 
Hive 2 was actually really entertaining. Not even going to acknowledge my existence, Goku. Go memento yourself. As I was saying, 5-2 was a really satisfying puzzle in terms of both concept and execution, requiring some precise movement to get around every last coin. 5-3 is another ghost house level with an impenetrable barrier of coins. Yay. I went into 5-4 hoping to continue the pattern of every boss level being a big fat zero, but these coin filled rings of fire were that dream's downfall. How insulting. I managed to get through 6-1 first try. It's really not that noteworthy. 6-2 is a ghost house level that for once doesn't have that many coins in your way. That doesn't mean I was particularly willing to try to get through it though. 6-3 might be possible to get through coinless, but I'd probably have thrown this entire video overboard if I had tried. And now comes 6-4. The final conflict with Bowser and it barely contains any coins. And with that, we're done with the game right? Nope, there's still a secret world to take care of. Case for snaking coins is the name of the first level. At least they actually run away. This is probably one of the harder levels on the list, but it's actually possible to well-focused last you to Nintendo. Piranha Plant Field is more upfront with its you don't get to beat this coinless nature. Make the cut is too hard for me to even beat normally, but it contains exactly 4 coins, so someone with more skill than me could beat it with 0. Also it's a boss level so that's an exact 0. Red Block Run is a lot more merciful in terms of coins, but there's still a lot of them in your way. More than I'm prepared to go for a low score on 4. Oh yeah, and there's another secret world too. Star 1 is plagued by these tiny platforms that are either really difficult or impossible to get over, and that made me really not want to try. I was so close to getting through Star 2 on the first try, but this one platform screwed me over. Then this ninja kept jumping straight into my feet on a different variation of the stage, so I made sure to safely vault over him. The platforming in Star 3 is super easy if you're not going for the coins, which, of course, we're not. Star 4 is full of fantastic fuzzies and not so fantastic coins. All the booms in Star 5 turn into coins when lightning strikes and I wasn't willing to navigate that minefield. Star 6 just has an entire line of coins along the only path. Star 7. Are you noticing a pattern here? Star 8 was rather difficult to get through without using these traitorous pause blocks, but with proper use of walls it's completely possible. And our reward is impenetrable coin wheels. Wow! Star 9, our final level, is filled with bob rooms to blow up these coin filled boxes with. So just don't do that and this airship will be left completely unplundered, even with the golden boom boom at the end. And with that, the run is done. Let's tally up the final score. Okay. My lackluster graphic design isn't the only reason this looks bad. In total, I managed to complete 15 levels without touching a coin except for the ones from 9 flagpoles, 16 levels if you can't make the cut. Six other levels remain in loops. Don't you want to be certain about those? If I let you tempt me into striving for perfection, this video will never be released. And on that note, I hope you all have a nice day, and ask you to leave feedback 